Katie, let's talk about you for a bit, oh, shall we? Shucks. Sure. <laughs> Beautiful transition. Yes. <laughs> so you've already told us that you are a meteorologist. Can you tell mm-hmm. us how long you wanted to be a meteorologist before you became one? Was it something oh, just from I... the very beginning? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was around four or five. And uh, actually, we were driving home at night in Michigan, and there was a storm and we kind of had to pull over because we couldn't see anything. Found out a tornado went right over the top of us. And uh, I thought it was really cool. And my parents didn't think that that was weird. So they were like, (laughs) hey, sure, we'll let you read all the weather books you want. And then another tornado hit me in 2011, which if you live in Michigan, you don't get two tornadoes twice. So that was a sign that I had to do this. And I just I've Mm. loved it ever since. What's your favorite weather phenomenon? (laughs) Oh, see, I enjoy tornadoes as well as big snowstorms. Those Mm. are my two that like lake effect snow, which dumps so much snow and then just twisters everywhere. Mm. And also hail. This is a hailstone that I made. It's a 3D printed replica of the largest hailstone ever recorded in the United States. Really? It's just that. I really like it. And it, it works great as a weapon um it's almost got like football laces so you can just <laughs> i'm not saying i sleep with that on my bedside table but maybe <laughs> so do you ever get like huge snowstorms and tornadoes at the same time i mean you can have tornadoes happen right on top of snow we had that back in december here um but usually it's a little too cold when it's snowing you can't get like gust nados or like little dust devils that pick up the snow and they get those in the mountains a lot those hmm. are fun i'd ski through that Here's a question for you that I just thought of when I'm driving from LA, when you said dust NATOs or shark NATO or something, you said, <laughs> uh, when I'm driving from LA to Las Vegas to go to the big Star Trek convention, oftentimes yes. in the desert, which I think is beautiful. I think the desert is the most beautiful landscape. Uh, oftentimes you see, there's like a, they're like twisters to the left and right. And you're like, I'm literally driving oh. down a freeway in the middle of a desert and they're just some big old twisters flying around. They don't usually come into the freeway maybe once or twice, but what's going on with that? Is that just like regular stuff that sounds crazy dust, to me? Dust devil, yeah. right? Yeah, dust devils. They That's just Taz. He came up for a while, but it's <laughs> actually, it's differential heating and wind direction. So if you're in the desert, it's totally normal to see these massive columns of dust being thrown yeah. up. And you can even find it in the Midwest in cornfields because it's bare ground. So it absorbs the sunlight a lot better. It doesn't have as high a reflectivity rate. And so you get these hmm. really quick warm ups, and it causes that rising motion, which of course, along with the wind convergence and whatever technology and meteorology has told us that it can make a tornado or a spinny boy. Well, not technically a tornado spinny because boy. there's no storm, but yeah, it, it, it's a dust devil. Just really pretty ones. Mm-hmm. Is spinny boy a real thing or did you just make that up? Spinny boy is a thing that young meteorologists use during our memes, uh, like in our meme <laughs> sessions, but otherwise mm. not really taken seriously. <laughs> I saw a couple spinny boys the other day. So, and then you got the sparky, sparky boom boys with the lightning. Mm. Yeah, you got it. There's okay. a lot. There's a lot of just phrases we can't use on television. <laughs> <laughs> like what? I'm not going to say them. My mother watches these. Okay. Well, then, yeah, definitely <laughs> only tell us a couple. Hi, Katie's just mom. In the chat. Yeah. Hi, Katie's mom. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh. There so, you go. Yeah. Here's the thing, uh, Katie, you were nominated for two Emmys. Could you please tell Not us one, what, yes. two, what those categories yeah. were? Yeah. So it was for my weather and meteorology presenting. So we had one for a huge weather special that we put together. It was like a 30 minute special on the great flood of the Missouri River, which no one knows or cares about outside of our area, but it was really <laughs> important to us. And so we did one of those. And then I also got one for my story on Petrichor, which is the fancy name for the smell of rain. And it actually can help mm. you fight depression. So everyone mm. seemed to have a very positive response to it. Wow, that's really cool. What What is the smell of rain? 
Well, the smell of rain is actually caused by decaying um, things in the ground and bacteria, and you also have fungi too. But when the water hits it, it puffs it into the air, and that geosmin, which causes it, uh, goes up into your brain, and your body processes it and releases uh, just norepinephrine and just happy mm. in, uh, endorphins and everything. It's really cool. So you're basically doing shrooms. <laughs> Pretty much. Natural decaying shrooms. Mm. I mean, I do love the smell of rain, don't you guys? It's mm-hmm. sweet. It's so good. Mm-hmm. Even when you one get my favorites, one of my favorites is like after it rains and the smell of the freshness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything's just like soaked into the ground and it's just green. And I mean, it's the least amount of dust because the air is actually scrubbed clean. Mother Nature's rain is actually getting all those pot- particles and pollutants out of the atmosphere. Mm. So, pretty fresh air after a rain. Yeah, even even if it's just rain on concrete, which seems mm-hmm. like it wouldn't be that great, somehow you smell it, or maybe it just reminds you of oh, rain. Yeah. I, I definitely love the smell of rain, and I didn't realize that there was a, a name for that. We I just always thought it was called the smell of rain. Hence the piece. Rain smell. <laughs> so that's why you were nominated for an Emmy. Brilliant. It's that's perfect. why. And fingers crossed, I get a couple more this year. We'll see. Maybe a win. A win would be nice. Do you have a couple of things that are in the running? Uh, we have a couple just from storm coverage. And then also I did a story on how uh, it's called silent alert and how people who are deaf uh, get weather alerts because they can't mm. hear the tornado sirens or their phone going off with weather alerts and everything. And so actually I'm learning like sign language, like a tornado emergency. So I can use it on air because it necessarily, but yeah, exactly. You just flip them off and then you emergency, <laughs> but yeah. Captions don't always work, so I figured might as well do my part. It was it's tornado. Like you take it, emergency? and you just yeah, you just tornado, and then emergency or emergency. There we go. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty it's neat. almost so like a witch that's the only thing one I where you're down. like, ah. <laughs> I just I think it's like Scarlet Witch, where it's just <laughs> double marionette. But yeah. Well, that's cool. So uh, everybody, you're gonna want to follow Katie and you know, let her keep, keep you in the know with all of her Emmy chasing. She chases tornadoes, but she chases Emmys too. Mm -hmm. Uh, And they're going to come her way real soon. So uh, check that out. We've got her goodies, her information, her links in the description box below. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg is pointing that out because he's the one that's going to be adding it. So definitely click on those links and follow Katie on all of her fun stuff. (laughs) 